Welcome back, developers. Today, we're going to look at querying our database. That is, once we've created a database, we need to be able to ask it questions. Because without that, data is just stored and is kind of useless. We don't want that. We want to ask the database questions and get good, meaningful answers out of it. Now, what types of questions you're going to ask is depending upon your situation. We've got our order example, and we're going to take a look at that by asking questions of the customer database in this example. So let's take a quick look over here what we can see. So here's a list of all of our tables and our views. Our views are actually gonna be these SQL statements where we're saying select something, but we've predefined it so it's already there. We can even use a select statement on an existing view, which is a select statement, and that's kind of cool but we're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna back up just a little bit. And so I'm gonna come here to my query window and I'm gonna say something like select. And this is how we always start a select statement where we're gonna get answers back. It always starts with select. Then we're gonna specify what fields do we want. For simplicity's sake, what we're gonna use is the star. The star gets everything. So all of our columns or attributes or fields, depending upon how you want to think of it, from, this is another keyword inside of the SQL select statement, where we're going to say, okay, where are we getting this from? We're not going to get it from just anywhere. We need to specify the table we're going to use. And so we're going to say customers. Notice that Heidi SQL went in, it capitalized the select and from because there's our SQL keywords and then it put a different color for customers, let me know that, hey, this is a table name. Okay, so with that, now I'm gonna click the run, and you see it comes back and brings back all of my information. So my customer ID, first and last name, email, phone number, etc. But what if I didn't want all of my fields? I only need a couple of them. In fact, this is preferable. Because if we have a large database, let's say we had 50,000 or 500,000 different rows inside of our database, and maybe we had more columns than this, this could provide a lot of information that takes a long time to download. So we're going to simplify by only specifying the columns we want. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to come over here to my select statement that I had, and instead of saying select star, which grabs everything, I'm only going to select first name, comma, and the comma is important, that separates our different field names, last name. Click run, and you'll notice that there it goes ahead and shows us our first and our last name, just as we would want and expect. That's the important thing for us to see, is that we have all of those. Now, as I'm looking through these, I might say, you know what, I don't really want to say first name and last name, Maybe I want to simplify it to just first and last. So this is where we can go in and say, hey, I'm going to use an alias. An alias allows me to change this name. So instead of saying first name, I can say first name as, you notice it capitalizes it. That's a keyword inside of SQL. I'm going to say first and last name as last. Execute our query. You notice that now in our column headers, it shows first and last instead of first name and last name. Now, here's an interesting fact. The order that we get these back is based upon our query statement. So you'll see that we have first and last, but if I want to have last name first, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut that and then paste. Once again, making sure I put the comma there, get okay, execute my query, and notice that there is now last and then first. So I can put things in different orders than what I see inside of my SQL statement very, very easily. Now, one of the things I can do is I can say I only want to see distinct values. That is where my two values, and my two columns in this case, are going to be unique. So if I have any duplicates in there, it throws them out. So how do I do that? Well, 
First off, I need to know that distinct is a little slow. It's going to slow down my query, so i got to be careful about using it. But if I want to do it, all I have to do is come over here and say distinct. And if I execute this, you notice I still have 20 rows. And that's because I don't have any complete duplicates between my first name and my last name. However, if I remove my last name, and I'm only displaying first names, and then execute this again, you notice that now I only show 17 rows. What that means is I had three rows where I have another name that's already being used. And so SQL comes in here and says, let me not show that. And that's an important thing to know if I'm looking to avoid duplicates. Now, most of the time, I'm not going to have any duplicates, especially if I have a lot of fields, and that's just going to slow down my query. So I don't want to use that very often. I'm going to want to use a WHERE clause instead. So let's show you how we're going to use a WHERE clause. I'm going to go back to displaying everything. So I'm going to say SELECT STAR from customers. If I execute that, remember this is where I'm seeing. And then I can specify, okay, how do I want to do my WHERE? My WHERE says filter out the things I don't want to see, only show certain ones. Okay, so a lot of my information here is standard. So I'm going to show something like WHERE first name equals, notice I only have one equal symbol. And then inside of a single quote, I'm going to put Jack. And notice I put a single quote at the end as well. Go and run that. And you notice that here is an example where I have two different Jacks. Jack Doe and Jack Hill. And I have information there that you can see. So here's a simple example where I can specify, hey, only show me certain rows. Now, that's a simple where clause. So what happens if I want to see something where I have a range of values? Like a wild card. Well, that's pretty simple too. I'm going to leave my where, but I'm going to change my where clause. I'm going to say postal code like, and I'm going to do seven, and then a percent sign. The percent sign is my wild card inside of SQL. You might be used to using maybe like a star or a question mark. This is unique to SQL, and it's the equivalent of a star in most other operating systems or languages. If I run, you notice I only have one value here. So you might be going, well, is this really correct? Was it maybe based off that last value? If I change it to two, notice I have two different things that come up. If I change it to nine, notice I have four. So yes, it is working, and you can see by kind of testing it with some different values. Now, of course, you might go, well, what happens if I need a better query? Not just where I'm checking for a first name, or I'm just checking for part of a postal code. Maybe I need to check for two things. Well, we can do that for you. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to specify and first name equals Paul. And when I run this, notice I have a Paul Lee and a Paul Young. So here I went from four rows that were being displayed down to just two. Those two rows were for the two Pauls that lived in a postal code that started with a nine. So I can use that and to string together and get more and more specific. In fact, this is a pretty common thing. I've done queries which have had six, eight, and even 12 or more different where clauses where I just keep saying where this and this and this and. I also have an or. So I can also go in and specify an or value, this or this. So some pretty powerful things that you can do inside of a where clause. I encourage you to check it out and try to see what else you can do because it is so powerful and is a common thing that you're going to be doing inside of SQL. If you thought this was interesting, you're going to want to check out our next video, which is on how we're going to query and bring in joining two tables together inside of our select statement. Allow our select statement to be that much more powerful and get that many more answers 
when we're looking for complex answers inside of our database. So stay tuned for that.